Is Bill there? Hey. Hi. Oh, I'm we hear you. I can there, see you. There he is. He hey. wants to see Jess more than me, I promise you. Can we show Jess? Wait, how do I get in the shot? That's there? true. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get Just, in the shot. Can we go to the Wait. next shot? There, there she is. I love you. Love you. They're calling you Bill Johnson now on the lower third. Mm -hmm. oh. Can we go, guys, could we go to that double shot? No, the, the other one. There we go. Bill, we love you. Thank you for yes. for coming on. It means so much. You're welcome. So, um, how's the weather in Reading? It's perfect. <laughs> perfect. It's always perfect. Even when we text you in August, you tell us it's just perfect it's, out. No, I, I, when it's 110, I've never said it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the faith. Uh, it means so much that you'd come yeah, on. Thank you so much. We love you. And uh, you. we just wanted to hear from you. I, I know you and I have been texting back and forth a bit. <coughs> and um, a few weeks ago, I asked you what what you've been leaning into, what you've been hearing from the Lord, how you're posturing your heart, and what you're intentionally trying to communicate to your family and to your team right now. So what's on your heart right now, and what's the Lord highlighting? First, I want you to notice that I am in the unremodeled part of my house. I love it. So it, it is filled with glory and splendor <laughs> and tremendous need for, um, I, my, my pellet gun is right over oh, there. Nice. That is incredibly <laughs> glorious. glorious. Yeah. Paint cans up here. Uh, it's, love uh, it. Sorry to, sorry to change the subject. No, I, I understand. Wanted to make sure you could make sure that you absorb the glory of this moment. <laughs> that green vase in the corner, yes. that's my favorite. Uh, well, yes. we put that there for you. It wasn't Thank here. You. <laughs> for you. Called campaigns. Peyton Campaigns. Uh, <laughs> so <how's> that? Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what is he saying? I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. I, I just, uh, I mean, I think it's vital that we, that we hear from him, but... But until he says something new, we have to run with what he has said. Yeah, well. And what he has said is, is uh, you have to have a problem to have a miracle. Mm -hmm. And we've been perfectly positioned to be who we are. Mm -hmm. We are we are a people that are assigned to the impossibilities of life. Yeah. And uh, there, was, there wasn't one moment in Jesus' earthly life uh, where he was nervous. Wow. There was never a time where where he, uh, you know, where he, he didn't have hope, he didn't have faith. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, when he faced the the crowd of perhaps fifteen thousand people that were hungry, and he had a boy's lunch, it wasn't an intimidating moment for him. It is for me, mm -hmm. but it's not for him. Mm -hmm. So the more I learned to abide in him, the more I picked up his heart and attitude. Wow! And that whole thing of abiding, you take a you take a vine, and you take a branch. And you can't tell where the branch begins and where the vine ends mm. wow. because their fibers interconnect. Wow. And that's what abiding is. Wow. Abiding is living in the conscious presence of the Spirit of God mm. in a place where, where there's not effort to pick up his heart. There's not effort to somehow think his thoughts. There's an exchange wow. of life that reproduces Jesus in and through us. And that's the great privilege of the hour, and uh, so I, we have great reason to be to be encouraged. Jesus said, "If you abide in me, and my words abide in you." <clears throat> so it's kind of like the evidence that I've given myself fully to Him is not only am I acknowledging the presence, I'm living conscious of that presence, but I have intentionally taken His word, like Mary did. I treasure it up in my heart. Mm. I pull, it's a treasure, so I protect it, I guard it. It's not out for common use. I bring it out for review. The point is, is it's a great, it's my great treasure. Wow. And the whole, the whole process of John 15 from verse 1 to verse 7 is to create this climate of abiding people <clears throat> so that when they get to verse 7, they can ask anything. Right. And it'll be wow. the cold brain relationship is, is illustrated by the fact that God can give approval. He gives us the blank check and he says, you fill it out. Wow. 
Wow. And he says four times in three chapters. It's, his, it's Jesus' last words, 14, 15, and 16 of John. These are, this is right before his great prayer, right before the end. And so these are his final words with his disciples. What did he want to talk about? <clears throat> Continually position them for, listen, we're going to see this co-laboring thing work because you're going to be so filled with my heart, my mind, my words are going to be treasured in you. The abiding presence of the Spirit of God has been given to you as a gift. Hmm. You're going to live in what I lived in for three and a half years. You're going to live in for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it's going to be so intertwined. The fibers of your heart and mine are going to be so intertwined that I can tell you right now, I'm giving you the checkbook. You fill it out. We'll make sure it gets done. Wow. 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 So this, this whole thing of moving into survival mode is just... It's, uh, I mean, obviously we got to survive, but uh, it sells the gospel short. Yes. Can you explain that, Bill? You remember the three people with talents, five talents, two, and one? Or you remember the story of the ten, the ten servants that each had a mind? Uh -huh. In both stories, the person who took what they had and protected it, they were the ones that were disciplined. They were the ones that were rebuked because we're not here for to, to protect what we were given. We are here to expand and increase what we're given. Mm -hmm. God is all about increase. It's all seed time and harvest. Everything he created is supposed to reproduce itself. Everything that's alive reproduces itself. And when you break that cycle and you put a donkey and a horse together, you get a mule that cannot reproduce. Mm -hmm. It's okay. God for us to reproduce after our kind. And the whole nature of our life as a believer is to reproduce after our kind. The new creation, who through the demonstration of the heart, the life, the message of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purity of Jesus, we reproduce after our kind. Mm -hmm. And that more and more people come to believe because we, we demonstrate this heart of Jesus. And it becomes a compelling invitation for humanity to step into what God provided. So... So survival is 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 good, but he he says we are more than overcomers, yeah. not more than conquerors. That's what he calls us. Wow. He says you are conquerors. So so you are not you're not even just a survivor, and you're not even just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Mm. You are a conqueror on steroids. Mm. You know, God <laughs> set you up to be victorious, but abundantly victorious. You're not going to be victorious by the skin of your teeth. Mm. You're gonna, you, you, you weren't designed to barely get in. Mm. And that whole eighth chapter of Romans is so profound because he, <clears throat> he starts this dialogue at the end of the chapter after he's established the fact that all things work together for good. So think about that for a minute. Why would he need to say all things work together for good if things worked perfectly every time we tried them? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. In other words, the comfort, the assurance that's going to end up okay it isn't even needed. Mm -hmm. If every time I try something, it works perfectly. Every time I pray, I get my immediate quick answer. There's no yeah. delay. There's no endurance. Right. Yeah. You know, faith brings answers, but enduring faith brings answers with character. Yeah. This Lord is looking to build a context of character to release the power of gifts in. Mm -hmm. So you have this whole thing in Romans 8 that builds to the end where he finally says, Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you. So what does that mean? What is he implying? Every assault of the enemy that he then lists, you know, famines, perils, earthquakes, you know, whatever he puts in the list, the, the opposition you receive, the persecution, the, all, all the junk, all opposition is to separate me from my awareness of the love of God. That's the number one target. Wow. So, wow. That's amazing. So, so then that means... <laughs> that means then the number one reality in my life, if you were to boil me down to the one prevailing reality, is that God loves me. Yes. Mm -hmm. God. So then, if it is the greatest reality in my life, for me to live unconscious of it is to live conscious of too many other realities. Mm -hmm. wow. Is to give place to things that have taken precedent over the supreme thing. And so what he does is he walks us through that whole journey. He says, 
Now, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And when it finally comes to the, the crescendo, the grand finale of this statement, he says, he says, things present and things to come. In 1 Corinthians 3, he talks about inher our inheritance. The gifts of Christ are yours. The world is yours. You know, eternity, all this, stuff, this is all yours. And then he says, things present, things to come. In both stories, he omits the past. Mm -hmm. Because he bought the past. Yes. And we don't have access to that. It's under the blood. Wow. So if I revisit the past apart from the blood of Jesus, I'm actually visiting a lie. Wow. Right, right. Yeah. I love that. Visiting something that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. And while it can't separate me from the love of God, it can shut down my awareness of the love of God. So abiding in Christ is all about staying conscious of God's love. Wow, so good. So I, I, I only make decisions out of two realms in me, love or fear. It's true. Yeah. And so if we've ever seen a time where it was brought to the surface, where you know the, the devil's no longer... Um, hidden in the back view of the church. He's wearing a red rubber suit and he it is easy to spot right now because fear is so prevalent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I live out of fear, then I'm actually rejecting abiding. I'm rejecting the opportunity to abide and to stay conscious of God's love for me. Wow. Right? So good, yeah, yes. absolutely. It's, it's, the whole, it's the whole thing that Paul lays out in Romans 8. He starts out by there's no condemnation of those that are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he ends with this thing. He's, he's, it, in, to me, he is saying every assault of the powers of darkness is to separate you from your awareness of God's love for you. Wow. wow. If you knew of his love for you, none of the things that come at you that intimidate you would intimidate you. You know, look at it this way. If I had Jesus in the flesh standing next to me, walking with me everywhere I went, <laughs> his arm around me, him whispering words of strength and encouragement, wow. what problem would I face? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so true. Right? I wouldn't face it the same way. Yeah. wouldn't face any challenge, opportunity, problem, crisis. I wouldn't face anything the same way. Because I am conscious that he loves me and is with me. So get this thing. Jesus said when he left, it's better that I go. Because if I don't, I won't send the Holy Spirit. So right. if my relationship with the Holy Spirit is not better than having Jesus with me in person, then I'm not capitalizing on the presence of God in my life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So good. Man, I love that. Romans 8. Yeah. I've been, that's what yeah. I've been in, Romans 8. Jess, the Lord years. spoke to Jess about Romans 8. Was that yesterday? Two nights ago, Two nights ago actually. Yeah. And um, cool. then I I turned, I actually heard an audible voice because um, it was one of our last weeks with, with our Jesus School students. So I was going to do the live stream with them. And I said, Lord, what do I talk to them? One of the last times I get to speak to them. And clear as day, I heard an audible voice, Romans 8. And then I got oh, there Lord. that morning and one of our um, other team members said, I got woken up and I heard Romans 8. Did you hear it in a dream too? Yes. Oh, wow. And then I turned on TVN wow. and you were on Pastor Bill and you were teaching on Romans 8. And now you're teaching on it <laughs> really? again. So I just feel like God is clearly saying something wow, to us awesome. through that. Yeah. Well, let me back up for a minute. I was on TVN teaching on it? You, so two nights ago, yeah. So two nights ago, I got woken up by a dream hearing Romans 8. Yeah, I yeah. came in to yeah. live stream for a Jesus school, taught on Romans 8 to the yeah, students. Yeah. And then I turned on TVN that evening, um, and you were on, and you were teaching on Romans 8. And I was like, no oh. way. And now you're talking about it again. So I really feel like God is highlighting this yeah, to us sure. so strongly. It's Wow. Wow. That last part caught me off guard. I didn't know I taught him. Yeah, <laughs> two nights ago on TV. <laughs> B Bill, it. Um, as it pertains to the abiding life and uh, being aware of the Lord's presence and his word dwelling in us, something I've always loved about you is your love for the word, for the scriptures. Um, I love the way you read the scriptures. You've, you've shared that with us how you look for his voice in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And could you talk to us a little bit about 
the, the, the necessity of reading the word, giving time to the word, and then how that plays in to being aware of his love and the abiding life. Yeah. I, let me say it to you the way I tell our people. Yeah. I, say, I thought I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sure. Greater people. So, you are. We are together. This is Jesus in print. Yes. Mm. Don't tell me you love Jesus and you don't love this. Yes. yes. Mm. Wow. So good. You know, people say, well, I, I, don't, I don't understand it all. Good. Mm. It would be horrible if God was your size. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be tragic if you could com- if you could comprehend this thing you'd be in charge of it you'd be in control of it you're not mm. this is the great mystery wow you say, well, there's parts in here that really bother me good you're <laughs> supposed to be bothered uh-huh. I I, uh, I give the story of eating at my favorite restaurant in the world which is French laundry in, uh, in the Napa Valley area and it's and my first time I went was quite a few years ago. And and I went, and the first thing, the first part of the meal, it's like nine courses, the first part of the meal they served us was this thing um, called uh, oysters and pearls. And, uh, and what it is, it's this uh, small, amazing dish of caviar and oysters. Well, I don't like caviar, and I don't like oysters. <laughs> Me and so I, I looked at this dish, and I looked at my wife, and I said, honey, I'm spending too much money on this to at least not try it. It is, it is one of the greatest things I've ever eaten in my life. Wow. Wow. Here's, here's the point. There's two ingredients that before then I did not like by themselves. But when you combine them with the sauce that Thomas Keller, the <laughs> chef, nutrition, puts together, he puts this combination, this recipe together, in the whole, it is absolutely glorious. Mm. And in this book, we have things that we like mm-hmm. by themselves, and we have things we don't like by themselves. <clears throat> but when you put it together in the great mystery, yes. the great rep that God has put together for us, it is the absolute greatest thing you'll ever eat. Wow. Amen. That's what and I, I wade through the genealogies. I, I don't, if, I'm, if I'm reading through a book, I don't skip any part of it. It's, I wait through a while because just because I don't think it's doing me any good doesn't mean it isn't doing me any good. Mm-hmm. People say, well, I don't remember I don't remember what I read. Well, fine. I don't remember what I had for breakfast last Friday, but I'm still nervous. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to I'm going to eat it because I know it has effect on my health and on my life. Yeah. And uh, and this this book is life. Yeah. It's it's living. Yes. It's a living book. And it's something we will study in eternity. Yes. Hmm. You know, the, the whole subject, for example, of the grace of God in Ephesians 2, it says, in the ages to come to unravel the mysteries of the grace of God. Hmm. Ages to come. So eternity future, we're still going to be asking a question. So what is grace again? Wow. Hmm. Let me put that again. Hmm. And just peel back another layer, another layer. Throughout eternity, we will be studying, because this is such an endless well of insight to his nature. Mm. And every revelation that we get to his nature, every time we get an insight to his nature, it's actually an invitation to an encounter. Yes. He, he doesn't show us stuff just to make us smarter. He's not that concerned about our intelligence. Yes. Not opposed to us, just not as part of it. He's, mm. he's, he's more interested in what I'm becoming. And yes. to see him clearly. When I see him clearly, I get a glimpse of what he's doing in me. Mm. Mm. He's made in his image. I stand in awe of his nature, but what happens is we become like whatever we worship, mm. good or bad. Yeah. And so it brings us into this place. You know, self discovery is no better than self. You know, <laughs> it's a, I mean, people have fun with it, but it's kind of a boring, boring journey. Mm. <clears throat> All I can ever end up with is me. <laughs> but God discovery is actually the greatest self discovery yeah. because I'm in Christ and when I discover who he is I find out the unlimited potential of my life in abiding in him and believing in who he says he is mm. wow. yeah. so uh, yeah, studying his word you know, just be consistent 
it'll be consistent in the reading of the word with some sort of a, of a thing together and create history with God. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I have a challenge or difficulty, I almost always just run right to the Psalms. <clears throat> I make it a psalm that the Lord really spoke to me out of, and, uh, and I read it. If a life comes from that thing, and you, you know, your heart begins to leap when you, when you, you know, when you're running into what He's breathing on, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This faith for what He's saying. Mm-hmm. And if that happens in that psalm that He gave to you six years ago or six days ago, then that's awesome. But if not, keep reading. Yeah. And I use that whatever I start with. I'll just use that as a as a starting place. And I'll I'll sit down. 20 psalms at one time, I'll continue to read until I hear his voice, until I sense that there's life on a portion of scripture. And once I know that, then I know that I'm, I'm close to home. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm close to a solution. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that my problem disappears in that moment. It means I change in that moment. Mm-hmm. And most of my problems just need a bigger me. Most of my problems just need somebody that represents Jesus accurately. Mm-hmm. You know, when yeah. disciples fail to speak to the storm, so true. Jesus wow. would then ask them, How come you didn't have faith? You know, mm-hmm. what they were needing in that moment was for their yes to come to into full force, where they would, it wasn't about them, it was about them representing Him well. Wow. And, and that's it. That's it. So most of the situations I face just need a bigger me, a, a bigger me that looks more like Him. You know, mm-hmm. and so that's that's what the word does. You know, yeah. It refines us, it cleans us, mm-hmm. it empowers us. Yeah. Um, you know, right now we have this unusual. We can't meet together. I don't know what it's like in, in Florida. We, Same. We, Same. Yeah. yeah. We can't have any meetings. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have this ache in our heart for the corporate meeting, yeah. but we have the Lord. See, one of the cool things that's happening, both both wonderful and bad, is that we are discovering how well we're treating our people. <laughs> yes, that's true. Just now reduced to the th- two or three. And he said, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Two or three. Yep, I need. Mm-hmm. And so what we're doing is we're finding out, out right now, number one, how well we're treating them. Number two, we're seeing, at least we're seeing, the impact of the church in our city is as strong now as it was before, before the virus hit. Wow. Because the people are having impact. Uh-huh. It's their homes. It's their family. They're reaching out to their neighbor. They're taking food to the elderly family down the road. They're, you know, in their cars delivering food to different people. Need one gal puts a notice on, uh, I don't forget, well, some social media thing. Said, listen, if if you need food, just pr- private message me. Let me know. Wow. Uh, we have some. We'd like to uh, help anybody who's in the crisis and. All they're doing is they're just putting themselves out there. Nobody, you know, it's not an organized outreach from the church. We have all that, but mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's just the church is the church. And uh, and so it's a it's a beautiful time right now to both discover how well we train and to see what we need to do in the future to yeah, make right. sure that, oh, the point I wanted to make was I've never seen a time in my life where our hunger for the corporate gathering and God's emphasis on the small it's like both are being emphasized at the same time, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. We generally do one thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. The, the essence of our faith is proven in the small. Mm-hmm. Yes. Our character, our willingness to trust, our courage to pursue, our mm-hmm. faith, all these mm-hmm. things are proven in the small. The corporate, the large, is where there's prophetic clarity of what God is saying in the season. And there's a sense of identity and purpose. So you get identity in the big. You get you get the realization of the practical application in the small. And both are happening right now. It's it's a, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I I've never seen a moment where, where both seem to be so clearly on the heart of God yeah. as they are as these two areas are right now. Wow, it's amazing. I'm not sure. But I sure tried. No, that was amazing. That was perfect. So, Bill, the other side of the coin, being aware of his presence, how can yeah. somebody become more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit? Don't go to him for something. Mm-hmm. Don't put your shopping list aside. Mm-hmm. It's important. Mm-hmm. It's important. It's actually, my list is more important to him than it is to me. Yeah. But 
if I go to him with my list, if I'm not aware of his presence and I continually go to him with my list, my relationship is, is agenda-centered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't want a relationship with God, a working relationship. Yes. So good. You know, the, the kind of stinging comment I make in this regard through the last few years is we don't want to, uh, we don't want to develop um, intimacy with God as a profession. Right. Yes. Uh, have, we have a, a name we call people who are intimate as a profession. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's the point. The point is, is that we want to make sure that with that tenderness we develop, apart from the agenda, those things are on his part, so that's his nature. But, but what I have to do to learn to recognize him is to come without an agenda. Mm. Actually, you know, instead of extending my faith for a miracle of finances, instead of extending my faith for a miracle of healing, mm. how about extending my faith for the miracle of discovery, finding wow. out who he is? Wow. wow. So he's, he says, I will be found of you. That's his promise to us. I will be found of you. Uh, the language there actually is saying, I will make myself conspicuous. Wow. So now, if you're pursuing me, just trust me. I'll jump in the middle of the road. You won't be able to miss me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I need then is a heart that is undistracted, a heart that's finally quieted down, and we have the opportunity for that right now. Yeah. The, the busyness has been silenced. Mm-hmm. For most most people, not for all of us, but for most, yeah. mm -hmm. dialed down, and so now I get to actually sit in a chair and turn my thoughts towards Him. Yeah. Maybe to, to maybe meditate on a, on a verse. Maybe for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Wow. That whoever would believe in that Son would live with Him forever. For God, the Giver of life. The Father of life, wow. the one who spoke all things into being, the one who created, designed, and created me for his pleasure, that I would find my utmost delight in him. That God, that Father, my Father, so loved me that he sacrificed the life of his Son. Wow. The Son actually became my sin to give me access to the family of God forever. That Father so delighted in me that all I had to do is believe in what he provided for me. Wow. If I had been the only sinner on the planet, he would have gone through all of that just to redeem me, the one lost one. Wow. When you take that verse, you start dwelling on that, you start thinking on that, what happens? You, you just get thankful. Mm -hmm. oh, dang, I didn't deserve it at all. I never could have earned it. I wouldn't have had the intelligence to ask for it. Mm -hmm. But you gave it to me as a gift, and I do believe. I believe. I believe you. I trust you. I trust you as my father. What's happening in that moment? Suddenly, you know, all the all the awareness of our life starts opening up to this this one who is the great lover of my soul, the one who who did as he said. I will make myself conspicuous to you, mm -hmm. and now his presence just becomes more and more real. It may be very slight, but whatever it is, if you ask for it, you better appreciate what you've been given. If you don't appreciate what you've been given, if I'm not a steward of what he's given me, I'm not going to get more. Wow. And so this awareness of presence is mm -hmm. this affectionate relationship to him. And oftentimes it starts with this meditation, this word, or you take the song that's meant the most to you in recent days, and you sing that you know, mm -hmm. before the Lord. And he's the lover of our soul. He's the one who draws near. So he will train anyone who wants to learn. Wow. And he's, the, he's the teacher. And yeah. he, he, what he does is he, he opens all those. Um, it, it's like he opens those, those places of the heart. Uh, Jesus describes heaven as a place. Uh, there's many dwelling places. We all have many dwelling places, mm -hmm. places of habitation in our hearts, so to speak. It's a strange illustration, but, but we have lots of parts to our life. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a pastor, I'm a writer, I'm a fisherman, I'm a, all these different things. Mm -hmm. Every every part of my life to awaken to who he is. I smell, I hear, I see, I touch, I feel. Mm -hmm. I want everything about me 
to be dialed into who he is. I want him to teach me what he's like. I want my senses, according to Hebrews 5, I actually want my senses yes. trained to recognize him. Mm. Yes. And it's just, it starts with a yes. He's already created the, the momentum towards us. This whole journey kind of starts with our yes, where we say, man, that's what we want more than anything. Yeah. Wow. So good. You know, I've felt, Bill, that uh, since, since all of this happened, I would say over the last maybe two weeks, I'm waking up with an awareness of God that I haven't had in, wow. I don't know, maybe maybe over 15 years. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm getting out of bed aware of him, and I have a refreshed longing to be with him. Hmm. And it feels very deep very real I feel the Lord um, his invitation seems I'm experiencing that invitation at a measure and at a rate that, that I, I can't remember like I said it's been definitely over 15 years and and it's uh, the scriptures to me are they're jumping off the page and wow. I have this new hunger to consume the word of God and 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 consume large, large chunks of it. Like, like you mentioned the genealogies. I, I mm -hmm. was talking to our students <laughs> about being so in love with him that the Lord will cause you to weep over the genealogies you don't even understand. <laughs> <laughs> you like, like I remember first yeah. getting born again. Um, I was, I was in, in the Orthodox Church. We used to make these. Uh, we make palm crosses on Palm Sunday, all of the kids in Sunday school, and then they, we'd sell them out in front of the church. <laughs> so there was a woman named uh, Maria. She's probably watching tonight, actually. And she was the first person to ever bring the gospel to me, like, personally. She had well. been born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, and she had just read Good Morning, Holy Spirit, which was, like, super <laughs> undercover growing up the way we did. Like, she's like, you know, so she called me forward to her desk, and those Greek women that I grew up around in Sunday school, like they didn't play. If you got called to the desk, it was <laughs> there was probably a three foot piece of wood involved <laughs> upon your arrival. So <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna get it so bad. That's so I didn't know what I did. So I got there, and she had the Word of God open. And I'll never forget it. She, her Bible was in front of her. And, and, and there was one verse highlighted, and it was John 3, 3. And she just turned it around, and she said, read that. Very quietly, she said, read that. And I read it. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I didn't understand any of it here. But something shot through me, like shot through the depths of my being. And I didn't get born again that night, but I, I will never forget the, en the entrance of his word. You know how the scripture says, the entrance of your word brings light? Yeah. I'll never forget the moment where that verse pierced me and something came alive in me. And to this day, she watches and follows our ministry. And I always say that she was the first one to really share the gospel with me. And obviously your dad sealed the deal in a <laughs> much more dramatic way. <laughs> But, but, but a three-foot board was still involved. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Bill, I've always loved your... Um, when we were in Reading, uh, so for those of you who are watching, Jesse and I did uh, two six-month mm -hmm. stints in Reading. Yeah, changed our life. Bill, Bill, Bill's still waiting on us to... To, to, to acquire a property out there. So, <laughs> so I, I had the chance to um, be there and knowing when certain challenges would come uh, to you or Benny or whatever you guys were walking through. And, and uh, Deborah would always seat Jesse and I typically right there in the second row. And knowing what your friends are going through and then watching them worship the Lord in light of all, all of it, it does something to you. And I think it's possible to look at that if you're, if you're you know, if you, maybe if you don't understand the scriptures or understand the ways of the Lord, like 
you can almost watch someone worship, believe the promises, decide to praise in the light of difficulty. They can almost look like they're not dealing with the reality. But I love what you say, that you're dealing with reality. You're just dealing with a, with a greater reality. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just want you to know that Jesse and I have talked about those moments a lot. And yeah. they changed our life. Watching you lift your hands and choose to worship Jesus mm-hmm. in difficult moments um, has inspired us, taught us so much. to do the same. I, I know walking in on into our building on Sunday nights, and obviously it's not limited to a service, but there have been many moments walking mm-hmm. in where there's just a lot going on that I'm having to navigate. And I think I, I always have that view of you worshiping Jesus uh, in light of those moments. And I felt the Lord say, you take your post and worship me and I'll do what you can't do. So, Bill, we just love you and just want to so just want to thank you for for loving us and yeah. and being who you are. Thank yeah. you. Anything you want to say? No, he was, loves it when you talk much oh, more. Okay. <laughs> oh, let me talk then. Um, no, I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, I love you and Benny, your wife, so deeply. I mean, we could do a whole segment about how much I love them. I love them so much. But I was thinking of that too. Um, when challenges, when we face challenges, when things get rough, when we go through things, there are certain people that you want to pick up the phone and call or just even see their face like I came tonight just to see your face that's I don't always come um, especially on the Thursday night I'm, I'm with the kids but I was like oh I just want to see his face so I need to come and just see you because it brings me so much peace just seeing your face brings me peace and there's certain people that you pick up the phone and call and typically for us it is people like my dad and you and Joy Dawson's like people in the faith that have walked through so much they have such a history with God and just having these fathers and mothers in our life is so valuable so I guess I have a quick question would be what would you tell the younger generation what could we learn from these fathers and mothers that just have like Michael said taken their posts and just stood steadfast, not wavered, and held on to the promises of the Lord, what would you tell our generation to do in times like these? Well, protect your hope yeah. uh, wow. is huge. Protect your hope, because when, once you lose hope, you, you actually become a magnet for things that, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like your worst fears Attract the fulfillment of your worst fears. Yeah, wow. it's almost like they're yeah. self-fulfillment in a sense. So, hope is just a, a huge part of the gospel. I, I would say, uh, do everything you can to protect your hope. Do everything you can to protect your peace. Do everything you can to protect your joy. Wow. And if you can just keep those those three elements alive, I know the greatest of these is love. And that's that's the obvious outcome <clears throat> that we're looking for. But You've got to protect your hope. Um, hope. Hope is the soil that faith grows in. So if you want to have mm. great faith in a situation, protect your hope. Because yeah. what you do is you create the context for the word of the Lord to come, for that moment to come when you can act in great faith. Protect your hope. You'll, you'll do well. Protect your peace. Mm. Um, I, I've, I've been telling our folks, well, I've, I've been saying it for years, but I'm hitting it much harder lately. Uh, if you don't have peace, then you left it somewhere because he gave it to you. Wow. So if you don't have peace, it's your own undoing. Yeah. Your, wow. your, your lack of peace is self-inflicted. Wow. So take responsibility, repent for embracing something other than what God is saying, wow. and go find out where you left your peace. So what I'll do, if I feel real anxious, I'll stop and I think, all right, where did I leave my peace? Oh, it was that phone call this morning. Oh, yeah. Mm. God forgive me. I actually made an exchange. Uh-huh. I left my peace on the ground and I picked up fear, anxiousness, uh-huh. anger, whatever it may be in that phone call. Forgive me for that. I made an exchange. Uh-huh. I pick up now again the peace that you gave me because he doesn't take it back. Uh-huh. So we've got to protect the peace and the joy. You know, Jesus, um, in that uh, God, the Gospel of John 14, 15, and 16, I mentioned to you four times he says, you ask whatever you will. <clears throat> the last time he says it, he, he says, I'll do whatever you ask that your joy may be full. Wow. wow. 
so he's targeting fullness of joy. The scripture says of Jesus, no movie has been able to portray this well yet, but the scripture says of Jesus that he had more joy than all of his, all the people around him combined. Wow. Put them all together, he had exceeding joy to all of them. Wow. <laughs> so his joy was, was a supernatural thing. And joy is such a priceless commodity that he endured the cross because of the joy set before him. Wow. So there was connection to e the eternal assignment to live in joy was worth the cross. Wow. So um, I, I just say protect, do whatever you need to do. You know, if you need to restrict what you watch, uh, restrict, yeah. I, I tell all of our folks, just yeah. take the news sparingly. You know, yeah. you, you, most of it you just don't need anyway, and, and a good part of it's a lie anyway. So yeah. <clears throat> just stay away, stay away from the poison. You know, in fragile times, stay away from people that uh, infect your faith. Wow. Uh, yeah. There, yeah. There are times where it's not going to bother you because you're in a place of real strength and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you're able to help them. But there are other times where it's not the case. Mm -hmm. Just be wise and recognize when being around this negative individual is, is really affecting you. And just mm -hmm. restrict your time. Okay. Um, Solomon said in... Uh, Proverbs uh, 23, he said, if you're a man of great appetite, put a knife to your throat. So what he was saying was telling somebody that was being promoted into a royal environment where everybody around him would have way more than he would have. And so he's saying, if you know that you have a bent towards wanting stuff, before you go into that environment, put a knife to your throat. In other words, self-imposed restriction. Keep yourself aware of your your the bent that you have towards being materialistic. Just live aware of it, not for shame, not for guilt, but just so you can have self-imposing restrictions. So I would say that concept applies all through your life. Hmm. If yeah. you find yourself getting negative when you're with a certain person, don't go with them without a knife to your own throat. Wow. Wow, Put the knife to your throat. Control your appetite. Hmm. Control what you will take in. Wow. And uh, it's just wisdom in life. And uh, so that, that, that's, that's what I would say. Wow. And, just, and do, don't do introspection. Stay away from that. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't lead to anywhere healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does, does eating good chocolate help any, uh, anything we're discussing tonight? <laughs> Actually, it supplies faith, hope, <laughs> and it, it, it comes as How about food. venison? The venison? Oh, you get those two together. It's a supernatural combination. So... <laughs> I can't, I, have, Amanda said I have venison for lunch, yeah. and I'm going to have venison for dinner. Our uh, camera guys just screamed amen from the control room. <laughs> <laughs> well, she came with me. We, have, we have a Swiss guy in there. He used to work, yeah. used to work with Jean-Luc. And <laughs> then we have a bow hunter next to the Swiss man. <laughs> okay. uh, so when I said venison, Chris screamed amen. He's the bow hunter. And when yeah. I said chocolate, Johan screamed, amen. <laughs> In fact, his family owned a chocolate company. You're kidding. No, and he's, do, yeah. and Bill, I just want to say, he's never once sent you a box. And you Johan, that, I Johan. just don't think that's okay. What's, you what's have to the name Pastor Bill a box of chocolate. What's the name of the chocolate, Johan? Johan, come out here real quick. Here he is. What's the name of the chocolate? Hold on, let Pastor Bill see you so that he can... Um, come yep, over yep. there so he can remember six can see the face that has not sent him chocolate yet. <laughs> just squat down a little now squat down there we go all right there, there he is beautiful jean luc so sent him over here company. yeah so the brand is favarge how do you spell it f-a-v-a-r-g-e-r -E yeah it's I've in seen. geneva it's in yep. the big red box it's amazing yep. has the swiss uh, cross on the front yes. huh? I think it's better than Kaye. It's yeah, better it's than Kaye. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, we can't go there. Oh, we well, can't go I'm there. I'm just saying. We can't <laughs> brand it. <laughs> we don't need a civil war. We switch. don't need a riot in the studio. <laughs> uh, I would love to. Yeah, I've seen that. I, I, when I go to Switzerland, more than once, I've had to buy another suitcase or obtain another suitcase because of all the chocolate I have to bring yes. home. Yes. The best. So, oh, that's so great. Bill, we love you. Would you would you pray? Just real quick, pray yeah. for the people. And Absolutely. Thank you. Father, I thank you that um, 
You never take us into a problem or a conflict unless you've prepared us. So we just say thank you. Thank you for the recent months, the recent years, where you have equipped us for such a time as this. Yes, Lord. You've made it possible for us to face this kind of situation and do it well. So I'm asking for abundant grace Mm -hmm. on everyone watching this program. Everyone. Abundant grace. I ask that you would um, cause everyone to be conscious of your presence and the manifestation of your love pouring into them as an endless, endless yes, stream Father. from the heart of God into their heart. I pray for this, God. Help us to be more impressed with your love than anything else in the world. Mm-hmm. And then help us to have a real uh, a real impact on the world around us, God. We thank you for giving us the privilege to be alive right now. We just thank you. It could have been any generation, but it's yeah. us. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let there be an acceleration yes, of every household, every ministry, every business. Thank you. Great wisdom. In Jesus' name. One more, uh, just a, a decree I want to make. Yeah. Um, uh, it says, Isaac sowed in the land, mm. and he reaped a hundredfold. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We know that sowing in the Christian world is almost always given, as it should be. Yeah. It's uh, uh, Adonica Howard Brown said the other day, it's not how much money I have in the bank, it's how much seed I have in the ground. Exactly. And I, I believe in that so strongly. And the story of Isaac's song is a great illustration mm-hmm. that supports the concept of giving. But in reality, his story is not about giving. Mm-hmm. He's a businessman, and he's planting a crop for his future. He's sowing into his own future. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that are watching this that are business people. In fact, regardless of who you are, take this time to sow into your future. Yeah. Wow. To sow into your future believe means you believe you have one. Wow. Right. There's something about Isaac sowing when there's a famine. Yes. The spirit of the heart of God. We don't know of God ever giving him that direction. But what he did do for Isaac is he showed him, don't go somewhere else and avoid the famine. Stay where you are mm. and I will bless you. Mm. So he carried that word. God was going to bring increase into his life. So he had the courage to plant in a family. And he reaped a hundred times what he would normally. Mm-hmm. So I believe there are mm-hmm. some people watching. You know, it may be an online uh, class. Mm-hmm. It might be a book on business. It could be uh, buy a certain stock. You have something that's just unusually been on your mind. Whatever it is, position yourself for increase. I, I just feel like that's, that's uh, I, I feel a prophetic function on that uh, just to declare that everyone is watching. Wow, well, we, we receive that. it. Yeah, yeah we receive it. It's not the time to let our dreams die. No. Is it, Bill? No. No, 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 no. No. No, it's it's not that bad of a season. I mean, obviously, if, if you've been sick or, you know, you've lost a loved one, then, then there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Yeah. But on a global scale, I mean, this, this is, I don't, I don't want to play it down. I don't want to play it down as though it's not a tragedy. But man, we've gone through world wars. You know, we've gone through devastation of entire nations. Um, in the in the broad scope of things, we are so well equipped to deal with this, and we have world leaders that God put in place for this. And uh, so I, I don't want to put it on in, any anyone you know who has suffered has had a real hard time. But we are well positioned for triumph and victory. We're going to see the economy rebound. We're going to see the church. Amen. Thrive. Amen. 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 You know, one, I'm sorry to drag this no, out. This no, this is awesome. Love, we love this. Okay. The Azusa Street Revival, we know, is extremely significant. What I didn't know until a month ago, mm-hmm. well, you know, Azusa was 1906. Mm-hmm. 1905, there was a million conversions through revivals around the U.S. before 1906. Really? Oh. Wow. A million, over a million conversions. Wow. So something had already started, and then the focal point, of course, became the Zuzu Street. Yeah. What I'm looking at this last year is we have the Send. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have Daniel Kalinda's gatherings of hundreds of thousands, millions. Mm-hmm. We have all these events mm-hmm. uh, around the world where tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people have gathered, and now we're, it's all been shut down. I believe it's been an attempt to stop 
the expansion of the global gathering. Mm -hmm. It tells me God's about to give vindication. Yes. Amen. That's what we've been yes, saying. Lord. Yeah. I think the multiplied harvest uh, is, is start. In, in much, it, it, what I'm trying to say is this last year that we've been so impacted by was nothing more than 1905, a warm up wow. from 1906. Wow, Bill. Wow. Just, yes, Lord. It's the harvest season. Yeah. We're, re we're really stepping into. I've had so many dreams about the harvest season coming, and that's what we've been talking about is it's. It's still coming, but God's refining and chipping away of all the things that don't belong in us and purifying our heart and getting us ready so that it can be all about him. So when that harvest season comes, I mean, now the people are ready to hear about Jesus like never before. So now's the time to tell the whole world about Jesus. I really, I, I say amen to everything you said because we've been talking about that as well. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I feel the quick work yeah. of the Lord like the quick work of the Lord on the horizon yes. in the harvest. And, yeah. you know, at, at the Send Brazil, I would say it's probably like top two or three events where I felt the Lord like in the city. I mean, the whole, the people were lining up, running in multiple stadiums at the same time. And it seemed like in a moment, stadiums were too small. Yeah. And now... Yeah. It looks like that is the case in America. All of a sudden, we need overflow stadiums in America. And while we were there, I don't remember who grabbed me uh, in Brazil. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. But I just remember it was one of the fathers there said, hey, uh, there's more. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful, but there's more. And, you know, we're so locked in, running it, trying to do it. But there was a father who walked up. And he said, hey, oh, it was Randy. It was yeah. Randy told me there's more. And then I saw him in the airport, and I, hadn't, I haven't seen Randy so tender. I mean, I've always loved him, but this new tenderness was on him. He was weeping. He said, you don't know what this means to me, to, to, to be coming here for all of these years and mm -hmm. to have him there was so special. And then he started crying in the airport, and he's like, but there's more. There's more coming. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's what you're touching on, Bill. Yes. There's more. There's more. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I love you, Bill. We love you. Love you. Give Benny love our love. You. Please give Benny love a big both. hug. Talk love to you me. soon. Love She's you. the only one I can legitimately hug right now. Uh -huh. Everyone else is an air hug. Yeah. <laughs> faith hugs. We call them faith hugs uh, right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, love you. Love you so, so much. much. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Love him so much. Isn't that was precious? so good. Yeah, he's. Just, yeah, what a blessing, huh? Oh, he's just such a father yeah. in the faith, and yeah. just brings, like I said, such peace and joy and yeah. such stability wherever he goes. And I'm just thankful for that.